Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we've got a real treat for you. I'm going to show you how to place a charge correctly on a number line using Coulomb's Law in order to balance the forces. So what am I talking about? Look at the setup we have here. I have a 3 nano coulomb charge on the left, 12 meters to the right is a 6 nano coulomb charge. And what I'm asking is, where should I put a third charge, let's say it's negative 1 nano coulomb, where should I put that charge on this number line in order for the net force to equal zero? So this question is not too bad. All you need to do is remember Coulomb's law, which says that force, the electric force, is equal to K, Coulomb's constant, times Q1 times Q2, divided by the radius or the distance squared. Since I have two forces going on here, I need to consider both. So let's call this one the left one and this one R, the right one. What I'm saying is the force from the left charge must equal and cancel out the force from the right charge. That's the only way this makes sense. The other thing we know is that the charge must go somewhere in the middle of these two charges because if I have a negative charge, let's just say it's here for the sake of argument, then that negative charge is going to feel two forces. One force is going to be attracted to the 3 nanocoulomb charge to the left, it will also be attracted to the 6 nanocoulomb charge to the right. That's because opposite charges attract. I do not care about the forces between the 3 and the 6. Don't care about those at all. All I'm talking about is the force between the negative charge and my two positive charges. I also know, just based on experience, that the charge, my negative charge, is going to be closer to the 3 nanocoulomb charge, and that's because the charge will always be closer to the smaller one. And we'll talk about why as we go through this equation. So let's start with FL, the left one. That's going to equal K times Q1. Let's say Q1 is my 3 nanocoulomb charge. I'm going to write 3 times 10 to the minus 9th because nano is 10 to the minus 9th. Then Q2 is going to be my second charge. This is my negative 1 nanocoulomb. Notice I'm only going to write positive 1 nanocoulomb times 10 to the minus 9th. And that's because even though it's negative, in Coulomb's law equation, I always use the absolute value. I always make it positive because the negative sign just tells me the direction of the force. And we already know that. We know it's an attraction force. So if I include it, it's only going to confuse me. And then divide it by the distance. We don't know this distance. It's the distance from the positive to the negative charge. I'm going to call this x. It's what I'm solving for. So divided by x squared. That's it for the left force. Now for the right force, it's almost identical. So the equation is going to be F sub R is equal to K times Q1 this time is 6 times 10 to the minus 9th. Again, Q2 is the negative charge, so 1 times 10 to the minus 9th divided by this distance will be different. And that's because if I think of this distance, what is that distance? It's not X, it's not 12, it's actually 12 minus X. And we can see that if this is x and the total is 12, then the remainder distance must be 12 minus x. A lot of my students have trouble recognizing that. So if you still don't understand, please post in the comments below and I'll try and explain it better there. So what I'm saying is the distance is 12 minus x. That will be squared. And then I'm going to set these two forces equal to each other. So I'm saying that k times 3 times 10 to the minus 9th times 1 times 10 to the minus 9th divided by x squared that must equal and cancel out with k times 6 times 10 to the minus 9th times 1 times 10 to the minus 9th, all divided by 12 minus x quantity squared. A couple things cancel out here. The k will cancel out. And in case that doesn't happen, which it should always in these problems, k is Coulomb's constant, which is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th, in case you're curious. It also looks like charge Q2 cancels out my negative charge. And that's significant because think of the implications. It means that it didn't matter that this was negative 1. That could have been negative 5, could have been positive 6. It's going to cancel out either way in this problem. Actually, any problem like this, it will cancel out. So in other words, with this problem, it doesn't matter what the charge was. It matters about the two other charges, the 3 and the 6. So going back here, that's the only thing that cancels. So then here's what I'm left with. Numerator, 3 times 10 to the negative 9th divided by x squared is equal to 6 times 10 to the negative 9th, and that's over 12 minus x quantity squared. If I want to solve this, this is when I cross multiply, and so I'll get 3 times 10 to the negative 9th 
times 12 minus x quantity squared is equal to 6 times 10 to the minus 9th x squared. The easiest thing to do now would be to divide both sides by 3 times 10 to the minus 9th because we're trying to isolate x, we're trying to get x by itself. And if you plug this in your calculator right here, you're going to get just 2, that's great, times x squared. And on the left side, we're only left with 12 minus x quantity squared. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the 12 minus x squared. So when I FOIL that, that reduces to 12 times 12 is 144. 12 times negative x is minus 12x, minus another 12x, and then negative x times negative x is plus x squared. On the right side, we have 2x squared. Many of you are probably wondering why am I not just taking the square root of both sides, which probably would work, but you're going to need plus and minuses on both of these sides, and that's going to confuse me with the math. So I'm going to say yes, you can do it that way. You have to be careful. But the way I'm doing it right now is the surefire way that will work every time. Now what I need to do is I need to get this to equal 0. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to subtract 2x squared from both sides. So then I get 144, combine the two negative 12x's to get minus 24x, and then I'll get minus x squared, that's equal to 0. Let me rewrite it in standard form with the x squared out in front. And now I've got the perfect setup for a quadratic formula type of problem. So I'm going to say x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So filling in my variables, it's going to be negative negative 24, so actually positive 24, plus or minus the square root of b squared is negative 24 squared. That will become positive. Minus 4 times a is negative 1, and c is positive 144. And that is all divided by 2 times a is negative 1. When I plug this in my calculator, I'm going to get two solutions. One solution I get is negative 29.0. The other solution I get is positive 5.0. So then I know just based on the logic of this problem, the answer can't be negative because you can't have a negative distance here. That wouldn't make any sense. So we are going to accept the answer x equals 5. So in other words, with my two positive charges here, again, if the total distance is 12 meters, then I want to place this just to the left of my center at 5 meters away from this charge, and therefore it's going to be 7 meters away from that charge. It's not exactly 7, and it's not exactly 5, but it rounded to that, so we're going to go with it. And like I promised, it's going to be closer to the smaller charge, the 3 nanocoulomb than the 6 nanocoulomb charge. And the reason for that is, think of this as like a tug of war game, where 6 is bigger than 3, and so if you want them to cancel each other out, if you want them to be both even, you need to put it closer to the smaller one to make the fight more even. And that's going to be true always. The placement of the charge for a net zero force will always be closer to the smaller charge. So now let's do one more. For this one, my left charge is going to be positive 5 coulombs, and my right charge this time is going to be negative, let's say it's negative 8 coulombs. And again, I want to position a third charge, which like we said before, the, the third charge doesn't matter what its value is, but I want to put it somewhere on this number line such that the net force is equal to zero. Oh, and let's say that these two charges are four meters apart from each other. So here's the first tricky part about this problem. The charge is not going to go in the middle. How do I know? Well, let's just make up a charge. Since they didn't tell us what it is, we can just say it's some positive charge. I don't care. It also works for a negative charge. But think about the forces acting on this charge. It's going to be repelled because it's like charges. So it's going to be repelled away from the 5 Coulomb. But it's also going to be attracted to the negative 8 because they're opposite charges they'll want to attract. And both of my force arrows here are pointing to the right. That means that it's not going to work. You're never going to get a net force of 0 if you put the charge in the middle. So then I'm going to erase that. That means that the third charge must go either to the left or to the right of my charges. And how do I know which one? Well, I know it's to the left because it's always closer to the smaller charge. Remember that. So now this makes sense because again, let's say this is a positive charge. It's going to be repelled away from the positive charge right here, but at the same time it's going to be attracted to the negative charge over there. And yes, the charge, this black one here, can simultaneously be repelled from that charge and 
attracted to that charge. And that's because of a concept called superposition, where you only look at two charges at a time. And again, we are ignoring the actual interaction between these two charges. Because yes, they would have an interaction with each other, so I'm saying ignore that for now. And for always. We don't care about that. So now I need to come up with some new distances. Like for instance, this distance I will now call x, the distance away from my positive 5 Coulomb charge. And so now when I say this is L and this is R for right, when I want to find FL this time, it's going to be once again K. Q1 is the 5 Coulomb charge. Q2 literally doesn't matter because it will cancel out just like it did in the last problem. And then the radius is why I'm saying the distance between these two positive charges. That's going to be X squared. And again, I don't know that it's positive. It can be negative. I don't care. But I'm just saying it's positive for the sake of simplicity. Now the right force is going to be almost identical. It's going to be K times Q1 is negative 8. But remember, I write positive 8 because I don't worry about negative signs in the actual equation. And then Q2, which is, again, our third charge, divided by, this time it's not X squared. Think about it. It's the distance from this charge all the way to that blue charge. That is a total distance of X plus 4. And again, that will be squared. So once again, I just need to set these two equal to each other. K times 5Q2 over X squared equals K times 8Q2 over quantity X plus 4 squared. Same as before, the Ks will cancel out, so will Q2. And I get 5 over X squared is equal to 8 over the quantity X plus 4 squared. Just like before, I'm going to cross multiply to solve. On the left side, I have 5 times the quantity X plus 4 quantity squared equals 8x squared. Just like before, it's easiest to just divide by 5 here. That won't reduce too much. The left side will be x plus 4 quantity squared. The right side will be 1.6x squared. And just like before, this is the algebra portion. So I'm going to FOIL out my two x plus 4 terms, because that's what x plus 4 squared is. And I'll get x squared plus 4x plus another 4x plus 16. That is equal to 1.6x squared. Once again, I need to set this equal to 0, which means I'm subtracting 1.6x squared from both sides. And I get negative 0.6x squared plus 8x, combining these two like terms, plus 16. That's equal to 0. Again, I need to use quadratic formula to solve. So x will equal negative b, so negative 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 8 squared minus 4 times a is negative 0.6 and c is 16, all divided by 2a, so 2 times negative 0.6. Once again, I just need to plug these in my calculator. One solution I'll get is x equals negative 1.77, and the other solution I'll get is 15.1. Once again, I immediately rule out the negative solution because it cannot be negative, which means my answer must be 15.1. In other words, here's the positive charge, the negative charge, 5 coulombs, negative 8 coulombs. What I'm saying is my third charge must be placed 15.1 meters to the left of my 5 coulomb charge. And again, I know it's the left one because it's always closest to the smaller charge, so 5 coulombs. And so there's some good problems for you to think about on the concept of Coulomb's law. By the way, you could do a very similar problem with electric fields. You would just change the Coulomb's law equation with the electric field equation, which is KQ over R squared. And the setup is very similar. So that's going to do it for me today. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.